Hey everybody, CFA back with you. Thank you for your support today and joining us here on Coins for Amateurs. Now we thought it would be a lot of fun to explore the history of the Lincoln Cent. So we did some research and we put this video together. We hope that you enjoy it. All right, the Lincoln Cent may never have come to fruition if it wasn't for the 26th President of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt was a big fan of art and he felt the U.S. coinage of his time lacked enough artistic touch. So in 1904, he directed Augustus St. Gaudens, who was a famous sculptor at the time, to redesign America's coins. While St. Gaudens did re redesign some coinage, his untimely death due to cancer in 1907 left the work incomplete, and the scent was one that he never got around to finishing. Now Roosevelt, along with many others, was very aware that 1909 was the centennial of President Abraham Lincoln's birth, and it was quickly approaching. Now, to this point in history, no actual person had ever been on a circulating U.S. coin. However, many people at this time were suggesting the idea of a Lincoln cent, and Roosevelt was enamored with the idea of honoring the 16th U.S. president and his fellow Republican in such a way. So in 1908, Roosevelt set up a meeting with sculptor Victor David Brenner. And while no one knows the exact contents of the discussion they had, it was believed by many that Roosevelt had great admiration for a plaque of Lincoln that Brenner had made. Then in January 1909, Mint director Frank Leach contacted Brenner about designing the scent. And as if Brenner knew the call was coming, he immediately responded that he knew Roosevelt appreciated his Lincoln design. It is believed that no other design was ever even considered, and thus was born the first U.S. coin mint for circulation with an actual person on it. For the reverse, Brenner chose two ears of Durham wheat, and the new scent was produced of 95% copper with a weight of 3.11 grams. On the morning of August 2nd, 1909, the new scent was released to an eager public that had formed long lines at treasury facilities. Now, although the new Lincoln scent was wildly popular, it wasn't without controversy. The designer initials VDB for Victor David Brenner were originally placed on the reverse and later removed by Mint officials. They felt that the initials were too large and prominent on the coin. While Victor Brenner was vilified as being arrogant in this size and placement of his initials, it was in fact U.S. Mint Chief Engraver Charles Barber who would have given the stamp of approval for production of the design and the initials. Either way, the change was made and the initials removed from the coin, but not after some had gotten into circulation. The ones from the San Francisco Mint in particular were released in a small amount at less than 500,000 coins, making the 1909 SVDB a highly sought after specimen by collectors. Now the Lincoln sale remained largely unchanged until 1959, except for 1943 when copper was needed for the war effort during World War II and they were produced from steel with a thin zinc layer. They were very unpopular, as they were confused with dimes, and once the zinc rotted away, the steel would begin to quickly corrode as well. But the 1943 steel scent does have the honor of being the only U.S. coin that is magnetic. And in 1944, they switched back to 95% copper. Now, 1959. That marked the 50th anniversary of the Lincoln scent, the 150th anniversary of the birth of Lincoln, and also the end of the wheat scent. The reverse that year was changed to Frank Gaspro's design of the Lincoln Memorial. Now the next major change came in 1982, when rising copper prices led the Mint to change the composition of the scent from 95% copper to 97.5% zinc with an outer copper coating. And that is how the composition remains to this day. Now, scents from 1982 can be found with both compositions and can be determined by the weight. 95% copper coins 
will be approximately 3.11 grams, while the zinc coins with the copper coating are going to be 2.5 grams. All right, then we jump to 2009. That marked the 200th anniversary of Lincoln's birth and the 100th anniversary of the Lincoln cent. Now another change was made to the reverse of the cent. This time, the Mint went all out celebrating the iconic 16th president with four reverses for the cent issued that year. The first featured a log cabin and was titled Birth and Early Childhood in Kentucky. The second was titled The Formative Years in Indiana and features a young Lincoln rail splitter reading a book. Now the third is titled Professional Life in Illinois and features Lincoln as a young lawyer standing at the Illinois State Capitol. The fourth and final design released was titled Presidency in Washington DC and features the half completed Capitol dome as it stood during Lincoln's era as president. Then in 2010, the Presidential $1 Coin Act required the cent to bear an image emblematic of President Lincoln's preservation of the USA as a single and united country. And the reverse design became the Union Shield that is still present on the coin today. 2017 was also a historic year for the cent produced in Philadelphia as a P mint mark was added for the first time ever on a cent to commemorate the 225th anniversary of the Philadelphia Mint. It was removed again in 2018, making the 2017 P cent very unique for the series. Now the unchanged obverse design featuring arguably one of the greatest presidents of all time is the longest running coin type in US history. And I would suspect that this is unlikely to change. The only way to stop the run of this iconic coin would be the decision by the men to discontinue the production of the cent. All right, I hope you guys all enjoyed our little history lesson on one of our favorite coins. We'd love to hear comments feedback, inside anything you might have to say about this video and about the Lincoln Cent itself, right down below. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep checking that change.